Many false information circulate around how you can obtain EU citizenship. In today's video, we are going to debunk those myths. Hello, I'm Jovana Voinovic. I supervise clients' journey here at Nomad Capitalist, where we help seven and eight figures entrepreneurs legally reduce their taxes and go where they are treated the best. And in today's episodes, we're going to speak about myths about European citizenships. A myth that we see a lot is that a false marriage can be used to obtain EU citizenship. I mean, that's very widespread, not only in the EU, but especially in the US and Canada. But when it comes to EU specifically, we want you to know that, that is not possible. The reasons for that are very simple. You do not get EU citizenship if you simply married someone who is already an EU citizen. Most of the countries do impose regulation that prevents so-called fake marriages and marriages for papers by imposing rules that you do have to live with someone for an extended period of time and that you do need to spend some time in that country in order to get a citizenship. Most of the cases that is anywhere from three to five years. It is even in that situation consider kind of as a fast tracking citizenship and countries will look into whether uh, you do live with your you know, paper partner. When you go and apply and say, okay, I'm married to a EU citizen, a couple days after you will have a police check. They will actually come to see whether you live there, whether your things are there. They will ask around. In some countries, they might do even uh, more frequent checking, but down the road, three to five years from now, um, they want to see, you know, proof of life that, that you spent together. So pictures, you learning the language, being enrolled in kind of communities, and really making sure that you as a foreigner, as a non-EU, are in integrated in a society uh, in that area. Obviously, those kind of things are not easy. Maybe someone pulls it off. I don't think that's really realistic, and that's definitely not something that uh, it is recommended. If you're really married to an EU citizen and you would like to hear more about how you can get a citizenship in different EU countries by marriage, write down in the comments and we'll make sure to address in some of the next videos. The next myth is that by giving birth on EU territory, your child is automatically becoming an EU citizen. That is absolutely not true. So EU and pretty much the whole European zone, and it's a bit extended further, uh, have the rule so-called Jewish sangri, which means that citizenship is not based on the place of birth, it's based on the origin, it's based on blood. Even if you, as a foreign citizen, come and give birth on EU territory, your kid won't get EU passport. So that kid will have a citizenship of where you are from. A similar rule also apply for EU citizen itself. So if you are, a, let's say, citizen of a Germany, and a resident of our Germany, and you just accidentally found yourself, let's say, in, in uh, Austria, your kid won't become Austrian. It will be German because you're German. So it's based on uh, blood, not the soil on which they are born. There are some exemptions, obviously, and it is mostly related to permanent resident. So if you have a permanent resident status, but you're still not a citizen, uh, of an EU and you get a child on EU territory, that child, again, depending on a country to country, but will most likely uh, get EU citizenship automatically. But again, it's based on the fact that you are permanent resident and not that they are born uh, on that territory. The myth number three is that EU passport can be bought. And we see that all the time and especially when it comes to multi-citizenship. Many people are saying, okay, that's a citizenship that can be bought, that's a passport that can be bought, but it's not actually like that. And actually many countries that do offer this, you know, fast tracking option are forbidding for people to say that those are passports that you can buy. Malta is one of those countries, so you can actually be banned from uh, doing business in Malta. So 
that's not a case. Obviously, multi-citizenship is kind of fast-track naturalization. So the fastest that you can get citizenship is after 18 months. And it's not really enough for you to come and give money. You really need to meet some other criteria and conditions, including spending some time, okay, not that much, but spending some time in Malta. So the fastest that you can get it is 18 months if you, you know, exclude kind of preparation steps. It's not as simple as you know, coming, giving money and taking a passport. So you need to go through different uh, and very diligent, especially in Malta's case, controls. And their disapproval rate is pretty high. Other countries do require uh, usually a bit more physical presence or uh, at least a couple additional years to pass before you get a passport. We also hear a lot, you know, get a Portuguese passport uh, or buy a Portuguese passport. This is not it. So this is not a citizenship by investment program. It's a golden visa program that gives you a residence permit. And if you meet other conditions, you can get a passport in five years. And not to mention other countries uh, that do not have such golden visa programs or that do not have any options for fast track naturalization. I mean, in this business, we have seen many people, you know, knowing someone and being able to uh, kind of issue you the document. That is uh, obviously in most of the cases a scam, then is it true? Um, so you should be very careful when you hear those stories that you can buy a passport in EU. Myth number four that if you become a citizen of EU, then you'll have to live there permanently. Obviously, there are no countries that impose such strong rules and not allow you to leave. Most of European countries do require you to live before you become a citizen, but not after. So as far as they're concerned, once you get your passport, uh, citizenship certificate passport and all of the other uh, documents required for a citizen, you can leave that country immediately. And in most of the cases, you don't have to get back anytime soon. <laughs> What we see as um, something very frequent is that uh, many investors do get a citizenship in one country and they decide afterwards to relocate to another. So we spoke a lot about Malta, but for example, if you do uh, go through a naturalization process in Malta and get a citizenship after 18 months, after that, you're free to live in any other European country and extend it to European economic zone, which include a couple additional countries, including Switzerland. So we have seen people uh, utilizing this option to uh, live in some other uh, EU countries that might not have such an let's say, easy path to get residence or citizenship. Uh, so they would get Maltese or some a bit more easier citizenship in the EU citizenship by descent in some cases, and then relocate to, uh, to any other European economic zone country. Why we say Malta, it's a very interesting option. You can use it really to reduce your taxes in some of the high-end places like Switzerland, where as an EU citizen, you do get additional benefits and additional tax savings comparing to non-EU. So many non-EU people would come, get Malta, go to Switzerland, apply to be their tax resident, and really significantly more reduce their taxes there and pretty much pay off uh, the cost of Maltese citizenship in a three years period. Myth number five is that an investor will need to give up or renounce uh, the previous citizenship and pay taxes in a new place. U.S. people usually think that every single country in the world has a citizenship-based taxation, which is not the case. Actually, it's really reverse. Only the U.S. and uh, Eritrea uh, have this system. So in all European countries, if you're not a tax resident there, you won't be paying taxes unless, of course, you are doing some business and uh, generating some income from that area, uh, which in that case you will. So it's a different tax system. Regarding the, uh, the first part of this myth, which is uh, do you need to renounce your uh, previous citizenship? The answer really depends on the local rules. Some countries 
do have that requirement, uh, they're not allowing dual citizenship, or they might be allowing dual citizenship for their own citizen, but if you are to get naturalized, you might not be eligible for dual citizenship. And so if you are considering getting naturalization in some, in some EU countries, you really need to be very careful and read their citizenship law very thoroughly. A citizenship by descent in most of the cases won't require you to uh, renounce your previous citizenship, naturalization might require. For example, if you live in Germany and you are about to um, get naturalized in citizenship, uh, you will need, at least based on the current law, we'll see how the things are moving forward and Germany announced some changes, but at least based on the current law, you will need to uh, renounce uh, your existing citizenship unless the cost of renunciation are uh, so high that it's just simply not affordable for you. The bit number six that we hear is that the passport gain via investment is different from uh, EU citizenship regular passport, which obviously not a case. So even you know if you're going through fast track naturalization currently only possible in Malta, if you're going through golden visa process and then applying for citizenship or you're going through citizenship by descent, any other type of naturalization, once you become a citizen, you are getting the same benefits as some people born there. So there is no difference in the travel document. The only difference that currently exists is regarding Hungary. And the reason is that the US is saying, yeah, we're not going to allow such a huge amount of people who got Hungarian citizenship by descent to be able to come to the US without any checks as you know, people born as a Hungarian citizen. So currently that's the, the only country that has some issues and that there are some difference between naturalization, you know, people who got citizenship after and people who were born with that citizenship. So that's it. Other countries do not make any differences. Connected with this one is the myth number seven, which has that uh, investment money won't be returned if ap investment application is declined. And we hear this a lot, again, very connected with Maltese citizenship, where people are saying that you're giving a charitable donation without knowing whether you will be accepted or not. And if you're not accepted, then they will never return your money, which is not true. So uh, facts straight, you are not making any sort of a donation of that size without being previously approved. There are fees that are usually given in advance, and those are so-called due diligence or uh, processing fees and they are given in advance. So this is kind of a fee for the government to deal with your case and to do a due diligence and to do a background and you know, spend your time doing with your case. But the amount, charitable donation itself, should not be given unless there is, you know, you get um, a paper that confirms that you have been approved for citizenship. The following thing that we also hear is that by making investment in any country in the EU, you can become a citizen, which again is partially true. Most of EU countries do have interesting provisions in their laws that say we are willing to grant citizenship in a very exceptional cases or based on merit for someone who uh, has um, you know, uh, made economical contribution or has some cultural, uh, scientific, sport achievement related to other country. But this is not a widely used rule. It's more an exception than a rule. And again, depending on a country, the amount, especially of this economic part, is very different. Again, this is a very, very hard process, which includes that in most of the cases, a parliament is confirming that person can be granted a citizenship. Usually it's signed off by president. So it's a very lengthy process. We have been seeing, you know, many countries in the EU 
be open for that, but the amount of money required for that is going anywhere from 5 million to 20, 30 million of an actual investment. So in most of the cases, you need to set up companies, invest in those companies, really uh, develop the production or services, have a lot of employees, huge investments, and really see that the community has benefits of your investment. And in this case, they might consider it. Again, this is a very lengthy process and not guaranteed at all. So we would never recommend this to someone who is generally not interested in making an investment in a certain country going this route.